Okay, so Abe, can you walk us through the process of someone trying to CPR a property that has two single family homes on sure. it? Sure. Let's say it's R5 zone and it's 10,000 square foot lot and let's say there's two homes or there's one house with vacant land so there's room to build another house. So let's take the one with two homes first. They already have existing service, they have water mm -hmm. and they have um, sewer hopefully and fire protection, it doesn't matter because it was grandfathered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what will happen in that case is if someone comes to me and says, hey, I want to convert this to a condominium, then we'll make sure that the land area is big enough. The zoning is correct. And one of the questions we'll ask is, do you have any building code violations? Example might be on the one two-story home, they put two kitchens, mm -hmm. one illegal on the downstairs, upstairs, and they have another kitchen in the back. Well, you only allow two, but the owners put three or they put four, <laughs> for that matter. That's illegal. And we always warn them that if you have any building code violations, we're gonna have a city inspector come out. And if they see that illegal kitchen or whatever you did, you built without permits, you're gonna get cited. So do you really wanna go through with the permit process and get the CPR done, or do you wanna just leave the illegalities the way they are? Some people have opted to just not do the CPR because mm -hmm. they want the cash flow. Mm -hmm. But let's say they say that's fine. And so mom's going to, mom and dad are going to live in the back, and they're going to give the house to the, in the front to the child or sell it to them or whatever, or sell it to someone else, but they want the money, or they just want to get rid of the asset. So in that process, we'll um, get the surveyor in, and we'll divvy up the land. We'll ask the owner, how much land do you want to give to the front and back? Now, in a subdivision, you have to give equal size, 5,000 square feet each. Mm -hmm. In a condo, you can put 3,000 in the front, 7,000 in the back, or vice versa. There is no minimum lot size for a condominium because the city recognizes 10,000 square feet mm -hmm. with two homes on it. They don't recognize condominiums, which is another thing that's really unusual, mm -hmm. is the city does not recognize condos. Mm -hmm. State does, but the city does not. So we do the survey, we get the architect go out there and do the drawings and make sure he does the floor plan and the layout, the square footage. And then uh, once we get all that done, we also have the city inspector come out. So we pay $50 to the city and said, we're planning to convert this to a condo. Would you please send someone out and you know, make sure that there's no building code violations? Inspector will call us a few weeks after he gets our letter. <clears throat> he'll come out to the site and check it out. If there is violations, he'll tell us, this, you know, you got some violations. Mm -hmm. So before we cite you, correct them. So we'll have the owner correct them, hopefully. And by, then, by the way, if we can't be corrected, he's going to get cited. Yeah. So we always tell the client, be prepared because mm -hmm. you might get cited and you have to be ready to you know, clear up the, uh, the, I guess, the bad deed. Uh, and the, so the inspection letter comes out, then we send everything to our attorney. The attorney prepares the documents with the declarations, the bylaws, the house rules, the maintenance budget if there's any. And then we'll record the documents at the bureau. The state says under 514A, HRS 514A, if you record the documents, the declarations, the bylaws, the house plans, and the master deed or lease, then once it's recorded the Bureau of Conveyance, it's a condominium. It's recognized by the uh, state as an official condominium. Now, you cannot transfer title until you take the documents to the city, uh, state real estate commission and they issue a public report. The public report is to protect the public to make sure that all the proper disclosures have been made to protect the consumer. So that means that the developer needs to disclose everything about the property. How many units? Are there uh, violations? If there are, you gotta correct them. Mm. Uh, how many units are there? What's the zoning? Who's the escrow officer? You know, what's it made of? And all that stuff. So once the documents are recorded at the bureau, then the attorney again prepares a packet, sends it into the real estate commission. Then the commission then hires a consultant who usually is an attorney, and on a contract basis, they'll review all the documents to make sure that all the proper disclosures are made. Then once a consultant is comfortable that all the right documents are in the right place, then they'll call the, our attorney up and say, okay, ready to pick up, get a final public report pub, uh, printed. So my attorney picks them up, finishes all the corrections, sends it back to the commission, then the president of the commission will sign the document, and it now becomes an official condominium. Mm. Now, it was an official condo back when we recorded the documents in so, yeah. the bureau, but it's now an official condo to be sold to the public by virtue of having the public report issued by the Real Estate Commission. So you got a lot of steps involved in going through this whole process. But once you get that done, then you can sell it to the public. 
Now you can transfer title. Okay. And we'll be right back. 